Hello everyone and welcome to my video on the expected value and variance of continuous random variables. In our textbook these cover sections 28 and 29. So just a brief overview of the video. We'll look at a fairly easy example finding the expectation of x. We'll look at an example finding e of x for a piecewise defined function. We'll cover a couple of properties of expectation and then use them in our third example to find the expectation of a sum of random variables. And our last example will cover finding the expectation of a function of random variables. Okay, so example one, um, suppose x has density um, fx of x is equal to uh, 2 over 25x for x between 0 and 5, and fx of x is 0 otherwise. Okay, now this is just a function of a single random variable, and we simply want to find the expectation of x. So we can go back to our definition for e of x. Remember, this is for a continuous random variable. So our definition says we, we take the integral over the region defined, so here it's 0 to 5, and we multiply x times f of x. So this would give us the integral from 0 to 5. And we have 2 over 25 coming from here. And in here I have x squared because I have to multiply x times this x. So we get this simple polynomial to find the integral. So when we integrate this, right, the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. So we do 25 times 3 to get 75. Keep the 2. And then I have x cubed evaluated from x equals 0 to 5. Clearly, when x is 0, we won't get anything. When x is 5, we get 125. So we get 2 over 75 times 125. It's easy to see that 125 divided by 75 is equal to 5 over 3. And then we would have 5 over 3 times 2. So we get our final answer as this fraction, 10 over 3. Okay, pretty straightforward problem. Goes back to just basic integration. Now what if we have a piecewise defined function? So you'll see these. The, the, these are common. And let's, let's say x has a density. Uh, given by f of x is 7 eighths for x between 0 and 1, and 1 eighth for x between 7 and 8. A little unusual, but this works. This is a PDF. We want to find uh, e of x. So the idea is simply to break up our, our integral into two integrals. One we integrate over this region, the other we integrate over this region, and we have to remember to multiply by x. So we get the integral from 0 to 1, 7 eighths x dx, plus the integral from 7 to 8, 1 eighth x dx. All right, so we get 7 eighths x squared over 2 from 0 to 1, plus 1 eighth x squared over 2 from 7 to 8. So here, it's easy to see again, 0 won't give us anything. So we will get, um, when x is 1, you'll see we'll get 7 over 16 if you do this multiplication. Now, 8 times 2 gives us 16. So this first integral evaluates to 7 over 16. And here in this second integral, when x is 8, we get 64 over 2 minus 
what happens when x is 7. When x is 7, we get 49 over 2. So when we take that difference, we'll get 15. And if we multiply these two, this second integral evaluates to 15 over 16. So we could add this up, 22 over 16, divide through by 2, and we get 11 over 8. So this is fairly straightforward. Um, we're looking at continuous functions of one variable in the last two examples. Okay, now sometimes we have uh, more than one variable, and this can happen in various ways. We could have this little linear function right here. Uh, we may want e of ax plus b. Well, we could take out the a, find e of x, and then add b to that. So we just simply focus on finding e of x in this case. In another case, we might want to find the expectation of a function, a continuous function of x and y. So what we have to do here is using the appropriate limits. I've left those out right now because I don't want to focus on that. But the idea is we'll be finding a double integral of g of x, y times our joint PDF. X or the other way around, the x, e, y. Okay, and in yet another case, um, if we simply have this linear function of two variables, expectation of x plus y, well, this is simply e of x plus e of y. So this comes up in a lot of other cases, and you can see how this could get extended too. All right, so in the next few examples, we'll be uh, using some of these properties. So here's an interesting example. Let's say we have uh, x and y, random variables. They have a joint density. f of x, y is 1 ninth times 3 minus x times 3 minus y, where x between 0 and 3 and y is between 0 and 2. So you may recognize this function. I know it's come up in uh, some of the examples I've done in the Zoom meeting. Um, but we'll, every time you see it again, we'll be doing something new. Uh, so for example, here we're going to find um, e of x squared plus y cubed. Okay, so as is common, uh, we need to find the marginal with respect to x and with respect to y. Um, I think that's the clearest way to do that. There might be a shortcut, but um, this is the, the nicest way to think about it. So the marginal with respect to x, I would be taking the integral of our joint PDF, 1 9th times 3 minus x times 2 minus y, dy. Okay. So my thinking is here, we want to integrate out y, and we know that y is going back here y varies from 0 to 2. So that's where I get these limits. So this is not a bad integral. In fact, we could even take another step to simplify the integral. We could take the 1 ninth outside of the integral. We could take the term 3 minus x outside. And then we're just looking at the integral 0 to 2 of 2 minus y. So so when we try to evaluate that, we get these other terms. And then when we do this integral, we'll get 2i minus y squared over 2 from 0 to 2. And you could see what happens is when we evaluate what's in here, right? I just, you know, 0 won't contribute anything. But when y is 2, this term will be 4. This term will be 2 squared over 2. So that's... 4 minus 2. So this term here in square brackets just evaluates to 2.
is actually this integral. So my final result here is that this marginal PDF is 2 ninths times 3 minus x. Let me go back to the original range of x. x is between 0 and 3. Okay, now having found this, we could find e of x squared. Right, remember what we're doing here, just, just a reminder, we're trying to find this, but we know we could use a property that we're going to find e of x squared, and then a separate calculation, find e of y cubed, and then we can add those two terms. So for e of x squared, um, I go back to my marginal PDF, which is this, but I have to multiply by x squared. Okay, so I, I take this function time x squared, this is what I get, and I need to use the bounds on x. So x varies from 0 to 3. So we could work this out. Um, I didn't put in all the details here, but what I would do is take 2 ninths out of the integral, multiply this through 3x squared minus x cubed, and then work out that integral, not too bad, you should get 3 halves or as a decimal 1.5. So a couple details there, you may want to try that. It's good to fill in the details. All right, now we have to focus on e of y cubed. And so we're going to do, you know, some similar reasoning. We'll find the, the marginal PDF with respect to y first, and then we'll find e of y cubed. So for the marginal with respect to y, now we integrate out x, right? So I'm going to go back to my original joint PDF, um, dx, because we're integrating out x. The bounds on x are 0 to 3. Um, Again, we can work this out. I didn't put in all the steps here, but again, you may want to stop the video and just confirm this. This is good practice. Um, in the end, we get 2 minus y over 2, where the bounds on y, uh, y varies from 0 to 2. So that's the marginal PDF with respect to y. Now we could use this function and find e of y cubed. So here, here's that function. But remember, we have to multiply by, you know, whatever's in here, we have to use that over here. So I have the integral 0 to 2 y cubed times this. All right. <clears throat> I did add a step here, an intermediate. Uh, what I would do to try to make this integral Out and then sort of avoid the fraction as we integrate. So I, I take the one half out, and then that would leave me with y cubed times 2, or 2y cubed minus y to the fourth. All right, so that's pretty easy to integrate. I have the one half, right? This would end up being 2y to the fourth over 4, and then minus y to the fifth over 5. You put in these limits, again, 2 doesn't give you anything, excuse me, 0 doesn't give you anything, but when you put in 2, simplify the, um, the arithmetic, let's say, then this becomes 8 over 5, right, not counting the 1 half, just this integral is 8 over 5 times 1 half, Divide 2 into 8, and you can see we get 4 over 5, which is 0.8. So now the, the expectation of x squared plus y cubed is equal to 1.5. That's the value we got for e of x squared, plus point, uh, point 0.8. I'm not sure why there's a 0.3 there, uh, but this should be 1.5 
plus 0.8, and we get 2.3. Okay. Any questions? Write them down, and you could ask me with an email or in the Zoom meeting if you do have questions. All right, and for our last example, example four, we're going to start off with a joint density, right? So let's say X and Y are random variables, but they have a joint density, um, F of X, Y is one sixth for X between eight and 10, Y between zero and three. So let me just stop right there for a second. What does this tell you about our distribution and X and Y? Okay, well, it should tell you that we have a uniform distribution, right? Whenever you have a PBF is equal to a constant, that's uniform, okay? And if you think about this region, X between 0 and 10, Y is between, let me say that again, X is between 8 and 10, Y is between 0 and and three, right? You know, geometrically speaking, what is that? That's a rectangle. What's the area of the rectangle? It's two by three. So the area is six. Um, and you could see that our, our PDF is one over six, right? So in two dimensions, the PDF is one over the area when you have a uniform distribution. Okay, that's observation number one. Now, second observation, which I'm going to use here in a couple of seconds, is, you know, are X and Y independent? And if so, what are the marginal PDFs? Okay. Well, they are independent. And what can we say? So I need, I need two sort of fractions that are going to multiply to one sixth. Okay, well it's pretty obvious it has to be a half and a third. But which goes with x and which goes with y? Well, you can see that if you think of this as the interval, it has length two, so the one half goes with x, and the one third goes with y, and this is going to help us out. Okay, so saying x and y are independent, the marginal for x is one half, the marginal for y is one third. And notice if you take the product of the marginals, one half times one third, you get one sixth. So there's a proof that they're independent. Um, okay, now let's say we have this function, g of xy is x squared times y cubed. And we want to find the expectation g of x, y. All right, well, we could take advantage of a few things. I mean, we start out maybe thinking like this. Uh, e of g of x, y, okay? We would set up our integral with the given boundary. So integral from eight to 10, and the integral from zero to three of x squared, y cubed, right, that's our g, this is our f, and then this has to be dy, and then dx on the outside, okay. So how are we going to do this? Well, we could sort of separate this out, right, this is where the independence comes in. We could separate things out, right, so the integral we were just looking at and we could either break up this fraction or leave it as one sixth, right? We could break it up to be a half and a third, but um, it's no problem if we leave it as one sixth. Um, look at the x part. So you have the integral from zero to 10 of x squared dx. And then that leaves us with the integral zero to three y cubed. So we, if we evaluate this integral, right? Pretty easy to integrate. You get x cubed over 3, but we have to remember it's from 
8 to 10, and this one 1 to the 4th over 4 from 0 to 3, leave the 1 6 alone. So when I substitute in 10, I'll get 1,000 over 3 minus 512 over 3. And then this one is just 3 to the 4th, which is 81 over 4. Pretty easy to see. I just have to subtract the numerator. So I get 488 over 3. 81 over 4, leave that alone. And you could simplify this in numerous ways. You could just take a calculator and see that you get 549. Okay, so that's our video. There's um, lots of these types of problems in our textbook. Um, so lots to practice. There'll be some in the homeworks. Um, so... This is, this is a, a good problem because it sort of ties into some of the things, something that comes up later in the course called transformations. We could think of this as a transformation, and here we're finding the expectation of a transformation. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the end, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.